Election Day is the day set by law for the general elections of public officials. It is held on the first Tuesday after the first Monday in November of each year. For federal offices, such as President, Vice President, and United States Congress, Election Day occurs in even-numbered years. Presidential elections are held every four years, while elections to the United States House of Representatives and the United States Senate are held every two years. The elections for president and vice president are held in years that are divisible by four. General elections in which presidential candidates are not on the ballot are referred to as midterm elections. Initially, beginning in 1792, there was no single election day. Each state was free to choose its presidential electors at any time within 34 days before the first Wednesday in December. This was the day set for the meeting of the presidential electors in each state. Election days in November were convenient because it was after the fall harvest was completed, which was very important in our then agrarian society. And it was also before the winter storm started. This was important because there were no paved roads or snow plows. However, this arrangement had its problems as states that voted later could be influenced by a candidate's victories in earlier voting states a problem that increased as communication improved through the use of trains and the telegraph machine. In close elections, the states that voted last could literally change the outcome of the election. It was not until 1845 that Congress selected a single day for the presidential election. After much debate, the day for the general election was set for the first Tuesday after the first Monday in November. This method was chosen to ensure that there would never be more than 34 days between the election day and the first Wednesday in December, which was required by existing electoral college law. Tuesday was chosen for election day because farmers needed a full day to travel to the county seat in order to vote. A Tuesday would not interfere with the biblical Sabbath of Sunday or with market day, which was on Wednesday in many towns. Lawmakers also wanted to prevent Election Day from falling on the first day of November for two reasons. First, November 1st is All Saints Day, a holy day of obligation for Roman Catholics. Second, most merchants were in the habit of doing their books from the preceding month on the 1st, and Congress was worried that economic success or failure of the previous month might prove an undue influence on the vote. The United States Electoral College is the institution that elects the President and Vice President of the United States every four years. Citizens of the United States do not directly elect the President or the Vice President. Instead, they elect representatives called electors who pledge to vote for particular presidential and vice presidential candidates. Each state has its own method of selecting the electors. In all states except for Maine and Nebraska, the electors are chosen on a winner-take-all basis. This means that each state has all of its electors pledged to the presidential candidate who wins the most votes in that state. Maine and Nebraska use the Congressional District Method, whereby one elector is selected within each congressional district by popular vote, and the remaining two electors are selected by statewide popular vote. While there is no federal law requiring that an elector honor his or her pledged vote, there have been very few occasions when an elector voted contrary to that pledge. Electors who vote against their pledge, or who fail to vote at all, are called faithless voters, and may face censure from their political party and even criminal charges for violation of state law. The number of electors in each state is equal to the number of members of Congress to which that state is entitled. By the 23rd Amendment, the District of Columbia is granted the same number of electors as the least populous state. That number is currently three. There are currently 538 electors, corresponding to the 435 representatives and 100 senators, plus the three additional electors from the District of Columbia. 
The Constitution also bars any federal official, elected or appointed, from being an elector. While it is the Electoral College that elects the President and Vice President, the voters still cast their ballots, which are counted to determine the popular vote. In rare cases, the person elected as president actually lost the popular vote. This has happened four times in United States history. The most recent time was in the year 2000, when George W. Bush was declared the winner of the general election and became the 43rd president. But it was Al Gore who won the popular vote and actually received about 540,000 more votes than Bush. Bush won the electoral vote by a score of 271 to 266. In 1888, Benjamin Harrison won the election by receiving 233 electoral votes to Grover Cleveland's 168. But Harrison lost the popular vote by more than 90,000 ballots. In 1876, Rutherford B. Hayes won the election by a margin of just one electoral vote but he lost the popular vote to Samuel J. Tilden by more than 250,000 ballots. And in 1824, the most controversial presidential election occurred. John Quincy Adams was elected president, despite the fact that he lost both the electoral vote and the popular vote. In that year, Andrew Jackson received 38,000 more popular votes than Adams, and also won the electoral vote 99 to 84. However, at that time, in order to be elected president, the candidate needed to receive a minimum of 131 votes from the Electoral College. Since neither candidate received the minimum number, the decision went to the House of Representatives, who elected Adams as president. This is the only time in U.S. history where the president was elected having failed to win either the electoral vote or the popular vote. There is no longer a minimum number of electoral votes that a presidential candidate must receive in order to be elected. All that is needed currently is a majority vote. The Electoral College is limited to voting for President and Vice President. It is the citizen voters who elect all other federal, state, and local government officials. These officials include state governors, members of the Senate and House of Representatives, city mayors, and state judges, just to name a few. Some states also include propositions which allow the voters to vote for the enactment of specific laws concerning such issues as marijuana legalization, gun control, health care and drug prices, education bonds, certain taxes, and even the prohibition against the use of plastic bags at grocery stores. Most states allow for early voting letting voters cast their ballots before Election Day. Early voting periods vary from 4 to 50 days prior to Election Day. Unconditional early voting in person is also allowed in 32 states and in Washington, D.C. Also, most states have some kind of absentee ballot system. In Oregon and Washington State, all major elections are by postal voting with ballot paper sent to voters several weeks before Election Day. Washington State requires postal votes to be postmarked by Election Day. Colorado is now the third state to allow voters to cast ballots by mail. For the President and Vice President of the United States, the election is actually held on the Monday after the second Wednesday in December. That is the day that the Electoral College electors meet and physically cast their vote for President and Vice President. The Electoral College never actually meets as one body. The electors that are chosen on Election Day meet in their respective state capitals. At that time, the names of the electors who were elected by the voters is read aloud and attendance is taken. After some formalities and a few speeches, because people in government love to give speeches, each elector submits a written ballot with the name of a candidate for president. The ballots are then counted and the result is announced. The next step is the casting of the ballots for the vote for vice president, which follows the same procedure. The electors then prepare and all sign six separate certificates of vote. These certificates are sent out as follows. One copy to the president of the Senate, 
usually the incumbent Vice President of the United States. Two copies to the Archivist of the United States, two copies to the State Secretary of State, and one copy to the Chief Justice of the U.S. District Court where the electors met. On January 6 of the next calendar year, after all of the certificates of vote have been received by the Senate, they are opened in alphabetical order by state in a joint session of Congress, and the winner of the election for President and Vice President is officially announced. The winners are called the President-Elect and the Vice President-Elect, as it is not until January 20 that they are officially sworn into office. Therefore, while Election Day is known to be held on the first Tuesday after the first Monday in November, the election of the President and Vice President actually occurs on the Monday after the second Wednesday in December.